Welcome to today's Summer of STEAM 2018 technology video. Today we're learning how to make binary tree diagrams. You will need paper, toys, and pens. Let's get started. Start by lining up your toys on the paper. Today's experiment is about categorizing different toys or different animals in our case. There are two methods we are going to use to do this, so watch. The first method we are using is called the one level method. In this method, we list each animal in order and ask the question each time referring specifically to the one animal. For example, here we start by asking, is it a rabbit? If it is, then you have reached your animal. But if it isn't, then we move on to the next question. In our case, we then ask, is it a cow? If yes, then you've reached your animal, and if no, we move on to the next in the series. And this goes on for all of our animals. As you can see, if you were trying to find one particular animal in the series, it would depend on the position you put it in in the series. Following a similar procedure to what I just talked about, lay out all your animals, asking questions specifically referring to each animal at each step of the way. Here Ethan lined up the sheep, then the cow, then the chicken. This process is known as linear, as it only follows one path. Now let's see how easy it is to use. Say that you wanted to find the sheep. We start by asking if it is a rabbit. The answer is no, so then we move on to asking, is it a cow? It's also no, so then we move on to question three. Is it a chicken? No again. Finally, at question four, we see that it is a sheep. This process takes four steps, as we have to ask four questions along the way. We move on to approach two, a multi-level approach. In this process, instead of sorting them in a line, we group them into categories and then further narrow them down. Let's see how this works with our animals. We start by asking, does it have brown fur? Now we have two different categories, yes and no. On the yes side, we then ask the question, does it have spots? If yes, then it's a deer, and if no, it's a dog. On the other side, we ask the question, does it live in a barn? We then split it again, with yes leading to another question and no leading to the rabbit. Our third question is, does it make wool? No further splits it, while yes means that it's a sheep. Our final question asks, does it make milk? If you pick yes, you reach the cow, and if you pick no, you reach the chicken. Here is a video of Ethan writing out a multi-level problem for the same animals. Instead of writing it in a linear fashion, each question creates branches. This is why it's referred to as a tree diagram, because of all of its different branched possibilities. So how does this tree diagram compare to our linear approach? Using the tree diagram that we drew earlier, we are again choosing the sheep. Now let's see how many steps it takes to get there. The sheep doesn't have brown fur, so the first answer is no. It lives in a barn, so the next answer is yes. And finally, it makes wool. This time, it only took us three steps to reach our final answer. Now let's compare the two different methods. The one-level method is linear, while the multi-level method is branched. This means that the one-level method has many steps needed, while the multi-level has fewer steps. Overall, it takes less time to find one object on the multi-level, compared to more time on the one-level. All of these different factors come together to make branched or multi-level tree diagrams preferred for coders or other people who sort large chunks of data. If you make your own binary tree diagrams, be sure to share them with me on Instagram at stem underscore files. Thanks for watching today's Summer of Steam 2018 technology video. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share.